Today, we'll take a tour of Independence Hall and discover what it was like for our early leaders as they took part in creating a new nation. For many state delegates and leaders of colonial America, traveling to Philadelphia symbolized the first part of a long journey that would lead to the creation of a bold democratic experiment. In the late 18th century, Philadelphia was a bustling and diverse cosmopolitan city located at the midpoint of 13 colonies. The most important building in our nation's history was originally known as the State House, today's Independence Hall. The Georgian-style building, the largest structure in colonial America, had been the meeting place of the Philadelphia Assembly since 1735. Beginning in the spring of 1775, Independence Hall became the home of the Second Continental Congress. Inside, on the ground floor, America's founding leaders gathered in the assembly room. This is probably the most significant room anywhere in the United States, as far as our history and the founding and forwarding of our nation is concerned. All of the states, at that time colonies under Britain, sent representatives into this chamber to confer and debate over what would become the most fundamental principles in American democracy. They argued clearly exactly what rights were going to be demanded of Britain and what they ended up voting for was independence. John Adams, Robert Livingston, Robert Sherman, Thomas Jefferson, and Benjamin Franklin made up the Committee of Five who were charged with preparing a document on the intentions of Congress. Jefferson, whose articulation and eloquence was well known, was chosen to prepare the draft. It took Jefferson a mere two weeks of summer evenings to write what was to become one of our country's most famous documents, the Declaration of Independence. Jefferson stated in that document, Human beings, by their very nature, are entitled to certain rights, including life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. On July 4th, 1776, the Declaration of Independence was adopted. Later, on August 2nd, 1776, an embossed copy was printed and signed by most of the 56 delegates in the assembly room. Later, in 1781, the Articles of Confederation were also ratified here. In 1787, during a long, hot summer, 55 delegates framed the Constitution of the United States of America. The assembly room has been restored to its original appearance as it was during the founding of the country. This silver inkstand was used by the delegates to sign the Constitution. Benjamin Franklin summed up his feelings towards the work of the convention with his famous saying, inspired by the sun, carved in the back of the president's chair. Franklin wrote, I have often and often in the course of session and the vicissitudes of my hopes and fears as to its issue, looked at that sun behind the president without being able to tell whether it was rising or setting. But now, at length, I have happiness to know that it is a rising and not a setting sun. Old City Hall was opened in the 1790s as the Philadelphia City Hall, but it's best known as the meeting place of the U.S. Supreme Court. Article 3 of the Constitution provides for an independent judiciary as one of the three branches of government. The Supreme Court, with six justices, met here from 1791 to 1800. On the other side of Independence Hall sits Congress Hall. During the last decade of the 18th century, it was home to the House of Representatives and the Senate. By 1791, the first ten amendments to the Constitution were ratified here. Facing the front of Independence Hall sits the Liberty Bell Pavilion, home of the Liberty Bell. In 1753, the Liberty Bell was cast in Philadelphia. In May of 1775, its ringing announced the convening of the Second Continental Congress from the Tower of Independence Hall. The Liberty Bell rang for the last time in 1846. A small crack had spread to the crown of the bell, causing permanent damage. Around the shoulder of the bell is a biblical inscription which reads, Proclaim liberty throughout the land and to the inhabitants thereof.